Hi there, and welcome to the Echo Solar Home Tour. My name is Andrew Mills, and today we're going to be talking about a net zero energy home just east of Beaumont in Leduc County. With me today are Lorraine Hibert Soucy and Ben Soucy, who are the homeowners. Welcome to the Echo Solar Home Tour, Ben and Lorraine. Hi, Andrew. Thanks. Thank you. So your home is a very interesting example of a net zero energy home that features active PV solar and passive solar, solar blinds to help uh, reduce the heat in the summertime, and a very interesting rainwater capture and re reuse system. So give me a bit of background on why you chose to build your home like this. What were the main things you were trying to accomplish? Well, um, I guess we had a growing awareness about uh, the climate change crisis. Uh, we became aware of the Eco Solar Tours about 20 years ago and started attending regularly. Um, we then a few years later became empty nesters and we wanted to downsize our home. Uh, we thought that it only made sense to build with the smallest footprint possible. And so the Eco Solar Tours uh, spurred our enthusiasm uh, gave us concrete ideas and uh, gave us a list of uh, net zero energy builders that we could choose from. Well, we certainly appreciate the, uh, the shout out. That's great that you got uh, something from our tour. Hopefully our, our viewers and people that come on our tour will be able to get as much from it as you did. So let's just start by asking you about the inner guide rating of your home. What, uh, what was the inner guide of this particular home? Uh, so when we built our home a few years ago, it was Enter Guide rated 96 out of 100, uh, which is built green platinum. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, today under the new Enter Guide system, our net zero energy home would be rated at zero uh, gigajoules per year. Yeah, very good. That's great. So let's take a look at some things in your home. First of all, what's the standout feature of the home? It is super insulated. Mm -hmm. So uh, our walls are uh, called an Enermax system. So it's a 12 inches deep wall on the main floor. Uh, it's a two by four wall with a five inch space uh, and then with another two by four wall. And then this is all packed with insulation. So that gives us an R value of R56 on the main floor, R40 in the basement walls. Mm -hmm. Our attic is also extremely well insulated with insulation and it is at R value 100. And our concrete slab uh, in the basement is also insulated and that's uh, giving us a rating of 7.5. Wow, that's a lot of insulation. You know, when we build energy efficient homes, we make a series of energy efficient choices. Now you've obviously made a bunch of those. What would you say were the main choices you made for energy efficiency in your home? Well, building the uh, envelope the way we did with, uh, you know, the efficiency it had was a no brainer. The uh, small additional cost of building this way made it really easy for us to decide. We uh, chose the lot because it faces south. And this was ideal for capturing the maximum uh, solar energy for our panels. We're actually 10 degrees uh, west of due south. We have 52 panels with uh, micro inverters. So each panel has its own inverter. And uh, we calculated that the savings in our energy costs would make it affordable for us to um, you know, do the installation of the panels on the house. In addition, we incorporated the passive solar uh, heat design for the house. We um, have large windows on the south side and in winter because the sun is so low in the sky, the uh, sun coming in heats the house really well. And in summer with the overhangs, the sun does not come into the house, keeping it uh, nice and cool, which saves us some energy. Very nice. And this is uh, augmented by the exterior uh, solar blinds. Mm -hmm. The solar blinds are mounted on the exterior of the house with tracks. Um, our research showed that if you have blinds on the inside of your house, the sun heats the cavity between the window and the blind. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Hence, the heat is in the house already. With the solar blinds being on the outside of the house, the uh, solar blinds prevent the heat from coming into the house to begin with. Yeah, that's very true. A lot of people don't understand that, that if you keep the sun out of the house, you can keep the heat out of the house in the summer as well. Very nice. Exactly. And another consideration uh, was our doors and windows. Um, the choice we, we took was the uh, triple, plank, triple pane low E coated uh, windows, argon filled, and uh, you know they were the highest efficiency and uh, comfort as well our front door is fiberglass because of its efficiency rating for energy. Hmm. And uh, because we have such an uh, energy efficient house, uh, we're able to heat it with two small electric furnaces. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need to have a gas line. So there are no carrying co costs for our, uh, for our house on a gas line because it doesn't exist. So everything in the house is electric, including the fireplace. And we also have uh, efficiency, uh, high efficiency uh, appliances, as well as LED lights throughout. And so last, I think we have a picture of the furnaces there. Uh, yes. Yeah, there they are. So these are these are actually uh, they're like a furnace, except they operate completely electrically. Exactly. And it's since your and since your house is so efficient, uh, these really don't operate that often. They're they're. Uh, they keep the house warm enough, but they're not really a huge draw on your power, are they? Exactly. On a sunny day in winter at 25, 28 below zero, the furnace might come on come evening. Some days mm. uh, it doesn't come on at all, even in winter. That's uh, remarkable. And uh, we also have um, a high uh, efficient dual core life breath heat recovery ventilator. Oh, yes. um, which circulates the air in the house, uh, completely re, uh, recharges the air in the house every three hours. And in the winter, the cold air coming in is heated by the warm air going out of the house by a heat exchange manifold. You know, another area of uh, cost savings is water costs. And I understand you have a very interesting system uh, in your home to help save water. Tell us more about that. Well, Andrew, we have a uh, 3,800 gallon cement cistern that provides um, water for our out outdoor uses, household toilets, and all the other non-potable water needs in the house. Um, this reuse of rainwater provides us 60% of our household water, water needs. That's really interesting. Just, just hold on to that other one for a second. Um, so I wanted to ask you, where does that actual non-potable rainwater get used? Like what's, where do you specifically use it in the house, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, the, rain, the rainwater gets used, like I said, in the outside taps. Inside the house, we use it in the uh, cold water for the washing machine. Okay. The, uh, the toilets, of course, and the uh, cold water taps in the showers and tubs. That's really interesting. Uh, do you ever have to clean out that tank? I mean, you're collecting the water off the roof of your house. Does it get dusty? Does it ever need to be cleaned out? We actually have a, um, a debris uh, basket filter on the outside of the house. Oh. And inside the house, in, in line, we have a uh, five micron filter, which uh, we replace uh, about every four months. Okay. The system itself, we disinfect the water with um, food grade hydrogen peroxide once a year. Okay. And we get the cistern professionally cleaned uh, every four years. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, the last question I have, you say it uses your, uh, it's responsible for about 60% of your water use. Uh, does this, actually. okay, does it uh, provide uh, water year round or is it seasonal? Do you get enough water to use it year round? Um, so far since we've been here in the six years, there are only two years where we uh, ran out of cistern water, February, mid-February-ish, okay. till it started to rain in April. Uh, the other years we've had enough to last us through the winter. So it really depends on the climate. That's really interesting. Um, you had uh, some other uh, water saving devices too. I believe you have drain water recovery. I'll let you talk about that. Sure. The, uh, 
the drain water heat recovery system actually uh, takes the hot water that we're using in the shower that goes down the drain. Mm -hmm. And as that hot water is escaping, the fresh water coming into the hot water tank wraps around that drain in a separate pipe. And the uh, heat exchange from that copper pipe that you see here actually warms the incoming water supply by you know a few degrees, saving us energy in uh, heating the, uh, the hot water tank. Very interesting. So are there any other features of your home that you want to talk about? Maybe permaculture or electric car or some other unique uh, items? Anything else? Yeah, uh, so we have a rough-in for a 220-volt uh, outlet in the garage for an electric car. Uh, we have done a lot of xeriscaping in the yard with mostly native plants. Uh, in addition, we have a large garden, uh, orchard, and a greenhouse. And uh, so this actually is, you know, uh, adds to our uh, low carbon footprint because we don't, you know, growing our own food, we don't have to make as many trips uh, for purchasing groceries in those months. So, um, Thank you for telling me about all those things and the features and everything else. So I've just got a couple other questions here. And one is, what would you say was the most challenging aspect of building an energy efficient home like this? Uh, so when we were uh, designing the home, the um, air source heat pump uh, for our colder climate uh, was something new and it was relatively untested. Mm -hmm. uh, so while, you know, we considered that option, uh, we did at the end of the day decide to go with a more conventional heating system uh, with our two smaller electric furnaces. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so overall, what would you say were the key costs in building your home? Uh, so the energy efficient building envelope uh, was relatively inexpensive. Uh, mm. So that was an easy decision. Uh, the electric furnaces were about the same price as the conventional gas furnace. Um, the triple pane windows were uh, slightly more expensive mm. than the, the double pane, but it made sense to upgrade given the insulation over the rest of the house. Mm. And the largest consideration, however, was the decision uh, whether to install the solar PV system immediately upon building or wait and uh, install them sometime after we had moved in. And, uh, and in effect, you put it in right away. We did put it in right away. Yeah, after mm -hmm. some considerable research in terms of um, the energy savings and the utility costs uh, it was determined that even if we had to borrow extra money on our mortgage, that that would more than cover the cost of the savings in utility bills. So that actually made sense to install them immediately. So the extra mortgage payment balanced your actual utilities that you would normally have paid for electricity. Yeah. That's very interesting. That's correct, yeah. So are there any other uh, examples of cost savings as a result of the way the home was built? Uh, well, we have a lot of examples of uh, cost savings. I mean, the water efficiency in the house, low flow toilets, faucets, et cetera, as well as the underground 3,800 gallon cistern for capturing rainwater means 60, we have 65% savings on our uh, water bill annually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is considerable because we're out um, in a subdivision in the country. Uh, our water is trucked in from the city to a community cistern, and this is expensive. The neighbors are paying on average $200 per month for their water. Mm -hmm. Our water bill is uh, on average $45. We have no gas line, so like I said before, uh, we don't pay any carrying charges from the gas company for, the, for that line. And I guess the greatest cost savings for us is the electricity. Solar production provides uh, most of our electric needs and we have no electric bill for six months of the year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, uh, this compares to similar sized homes which pay on average 
$500 a month for electricity. That's really neat. That's, that's very impressive. Uh, is there anything else you would have done differently in building your home? Uh, I'm thinking back, I think we would have added a few more solar panels immediately. We have it roughed in for an additional 20. We would have installed those 20 at the build. Interesting. Uh, what's the part of the uh, of your house that you like the best? Uh, I'm not getting power bills. <laughs> That's great. Now, <laughs> last question. What aspect of your home was the most satisfying to complete? Uh, ben uh, installed the solar panels all by himself. Oh, so, nice. yeah, he uh, had a tutorial from the uh, solar provider, Skyfire. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, he decided he could do the install himself. So he designed a system where he could um, use a pulley type uh, system to uh, put them up on the roof. And uh, so he installed them and we had an electrician uh, do the actual physical connection. Uh, so Ben, I should mention as a former tradesman and also happens to be um, a bit of a MacGyver type of person that he can figure out how to do almost any kind of uh, trade. So Fantastic. that was that was very fortunate for us. She says, MacGyver, I'm just a good guesser. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. So I hear uh, I hear you're going to be uh, looking at building another new net zero home. That's very interesting. Tell me anybody that you'd like to thank about your design or in the construction of your home and what you're doing next. Uh, I'm very interested. Well, we'd like to you know thank Rosecrest Builders who helped us build this home mm -hmm. and uh, we also want to take, uh, thank uh, Maxwell Realty for uh, listing it and helping us to, to sell it. What we're looking at now is uh, buying a, well, we've actually bought uh, a small farm, 12 and a half acres of uh, okay. organic berries and fruits. And we're looking to build another net zero home on that property as well. Wow, well, I wish you a lot of luck in that. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your next home when you get it built. And uh, I'll also come out this uh, summer to see your home on the Echo Solar Tour. So thank you, Lorraine and Ben, for joining me today and sharing pictures of your home. I do look forward uh, to seeing your home in person when the tour comes up. So I also want to thank the Echo Solar Tour sponsors. Uh, our sponsors offer many interesting services to help you build an energy efficient home. And we encourage you to visit them. Please visit our website to find the links to all our sponsors. To find out more about our tour homes, tour dates and sponsors, please go to our website at www.echosolar.ca. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the tour.